Hey guys, do you like super fast, super powerful and super easy builds? Then just check out this one. So this is the new Storm Feathers Evade build. You just spam Evade and zoom through the map and cast all of this Storm Feathers here that you can see. Um, maybe you already have seen this build somewhere else. Well, DJ also made a video about that. Um, so this is a very hyping build right now. It might be the strongest leveling build. And you can also dive a bit into endgame as well. So I think you can also play this in tier 4, in Torment 4. Which is not too easy nowadays with uh, Wrestle of Hatred. But especially for leveling and just getting your first glyphs and gear and level up your glyphs and stuff like that. I think this is the most amazing and fun build that you can right now play in the game. So you don't have to spend any resources. You don't need to scale it with uh, attack speed or something like that. You just spam your evade. So this is maybe one disadvantage of the build. You have to spam the evade button over and over. So um, if you saw the video from Vodijo, he has like a trick where he also uses his mouse wheel to control the evade spam. But for me, it didn't work very well. My mouse cannot handle this. So I just spam uh, my space bar and it's not the most fun thing you can do, but it's kind of okay, I would say. So maybe I will get tired after one hour, but um, yeah, it's it's manageable. And well, you can see here we're just crushing this tier 50, which is the entrance pit level for uh, Torment 3. And I think, yeah, we're doing it in about 130 to 145, so below two minutes, Torment 3 pits, uh, pit runs. And you don't need actually too much gear for that, so yeah, I don't know what to say. You just see the gameplay is pretty much insane here. I don't have masterworked anything so far. Um, I can also, by the way, show you some uh, Lilith kill if you're interested in that. Okay, so here we have the Lilith kill. And you can see I was only Paragon level 25 back then. And I also didn't have the unique staff that you need in order to uh, play the build in the way how I showed you in the gameplay. So this was more like my leveling build. And I just want to show you that even Lilith is no problem with the leveling version. So here I just <laughs> spam, I can't spam my evade because I don't have the unique weapon. But I just cast my basic attacks to reduce my evade cooldown this way. So we can also just uh, go a bit further here and just sh showcase you that the damage is kind of good in the early torment here. So this is torment 1 Lilith. So if that's your goal as well, to kill... Lilith early on without having any master working tempering on your gear then you can see it's no problem so I can just show you the end quickly here so yeah that was the Lilith kill as well and then I also want to show you that after you have finished the campaign the number one thing you usually want to do is to clear the pit tier 20 because this is part of the Oro quest and basically introduces you into the end game of Diablo 4. So after you've fi finished your campaign, you want to dive in into the end game. And um, this build is also very powerful in order to do that. So you can see here, I'm only Paragon level 10, so I'm just in the beginning of the game basically. So this was after 7 hours of the campaign. And I can't spam my evade like you just saw in the first gameplay clip because I don't have any unique weapons. But this build is very powerful even without any uniques. So here instead of spamming evade all the time, you have to use your basic attack. So you have this eagle basic attack skill that reduces your evade skill every third attack. And so this way we can also evade quite often. We also have maximum charges of evade up to four um, due to some passives in the spirit bond skill tree and so with this easy uh, leveling build here you can also pretty much just enter into the uh, torment tier one and this way also enter into the end game of diablo 4 so yeah also very chill very easy pit clear here i think this was my first try as well just make sure that you temper some um, stuff on your items so I, I would not temper too much it's not necessary but at least on your weapon and maybe on your gloves you can temper one or two offensive um, affixes so especially storm feather potency is very important um, but also something like vulnerable damage so damage sources in general or also eagle damage will just help you to boost a little bit there in the beginning and of course also not in order to not die you need to cap out your resistances a bit so just pay attention to your uh, jewelry gems for example you can just um, 
yeah, cap out your resistance resistances quite easily with some gems in your jewelry. Also, uh, maybe get some maximum life on your items, so just so you have some amount of um, survivability here. And then you can see you will unlock the Torment difficulties after you finished your first um, pit. And with this build, it's very easy to do. Okay, now I want to talk about the key mechanics of this build. So this is, as you saw, an evade spam build. And in order to do that, in order to spam your evades, you need a unique item, which is the Sepa Sontek. So this is a unique quarter staff, and this basically allows you to spam your basic skills third attack all the time. And the third attack of Thunder Spike says that your evade cooldown is reduced by five seconds. So this way we can just reset our evade cooldown all the time and just spam it. Uh, the staff is pretty easy to get, you just have to um, trade your obos at the cu cu curiosity vendor, sorry, um, and then you will just um, gamble for quarter staffs, and since they are only three unique weapons right now, or I think even only two quarter staffs, then it's uh, you have pretty high odds to find this weapon quite early on, so I also just got it in the first 10 rolls, I think. So it's not too difficult to get it, and once you have unlocked it, you can uh, spam your evades. But even without this weapon, this build is playable, so like I showed you in the gameplay for Pit 20, you will just need to attack with your basic skill from time to time, and then you will also reset your evade charges, and this is a very solid leveling build. Um, but obviously it's way more fun once you have found your Seppa Sontek. And so the other core mechanic is, you can see we only have four skills in our active, cool, uh, active skill bar, and we actually only use two of them. We never use counterattack, this is only here as a uh, passive, so we, all, we increase our critical strike damage, just having it in our active um, skill bar. And we also never use Thunder Spike, so the only skills we ever use are Armor Tide and the Hunter. And Armor Tide is very important, because what Armor Tide allows us is to get access to this unyielding hits aspect. So this aspect is by far the most broken offensive aspect in the game right now. It even got nerfed, um, so now the maximum weapon damage bonus is 1500, which is still triple or four times the damage that you will deal. Uh, after reaching the maximum, and so this aspect is still just insane. So it basically converts your armor into weapon damage, and so I have 1500 armor, so this would give me around 300 additional weapon damage, as you can see here right now, after I have uh, pushed the button here and activated my armor tide. So this is by far the most powerful aspect also for this build and in order to get use of it we need to cast the gorilla skill so for that reason we're using armor tide and armor tide is also very good in other ways it gives us maximum resolve stacks which also give us damage reduction and increase our damage um, so we have for example this um, uh, colossal glyph which increases damage with resolve also it gives us 100 percent block chance which is also important for redirected force, so this aspect gives us critical strike damage equal to our block chance, and so if we have 100% block chance, then it just gives us the maximum bonus here. So armor tide is just a very very powerful skill. It basically gives us everything we need in order to scale our damage and also help us with survivability. So in the best case scenario, you want to spam armor tide all the time. But the problem is armor tide has 25 seconds of cooldown. So how do we spam it? And for that reason, I have a mechanic here with the hunter ultimate skill and with intricacy passive. So with intricacy, we are able to basically repeat the last skill we used before casting our ultimate. So if you pay attention now, I will cast my armor tide um, I will wait until the duration is finished, the green bar that is moving there above the skill. Now I activate my hunter skill and you can see I can push it again for free. So now I just get a free charge and I can cast it another time after this free charge. So I basically um, received two free charges. So I can do this again. I will cast my ultimate skill. Now I can cast for free. So you see I have the green bar getting lower and lower, this is the duration, and now I can cast it again. So every time I use my ultimate skill, I get two free charges of armor tide. 
And this is what basically allows us to spam Armatite all the time. You just need to pay some attention to the active duration. So I only use it once it finished the active duration, which is 4.5 seconds in my case, because I have six ranks into it. So this might depend on your total ranks you have in your armor tide. So after 4.5 4 seconds, I will push it again for another charge. And now the question is, how do we reset our cooldown for the ultimate? Because we need to cast the ultimate also quite often. So the thing with Hunter is, uh, killing an enemy while a Hunter is present has a 40% chance to instantly reset its cooldown. So most of the times you will reset Hunter automatically just by killing enemies while it's active. But for the case that this will not happen all the time, sometimes you will not proc the cooldown reset. I also play with a rune word called Cham Zag Acrobatic Power, which says reduce your active ultimate cooldown by two seconds every time I cast Evade. Or, okay, actually I have to evade three times and then I will reset it by uh, two seconds. But since we are waiting so often, you can see my Hunter cooldown is also reducing itself quite frequently. And I'm not even playing with some cooldown tempers, so you can also temper Hunter cooldown reduction on your rings and amulet. And then you will even have way less cooldown. So I think in the combination with the tempers, you will have uh, something like 29, 28 cooldown, uh, total cooldown for the Hunter ultimate. And then you will just reset it basically all the time. So yeah, this is the technique, the mechanic behind this armor height spam. And you can, for example, see the damage without armor height is kind of okay, but once I activate armor height, it doubles or even triples. So it's very important to have armor height active uh, as often as possible. So yeah, this is basically the core mechanic. And now we can continue with the gear part. So talking about the gear, we have some important items. Like I mentioned here, the Zephyr Sontag, of course, enables this spam evade build. And then we also have Loyalty's Mantle, which is also kind of important. So Loyalty's Mantle um, basically doubles up your potency for the Spirit Feathers, which you can, by the way, find here in the Spirit Hall. So here we just need to play with both Eagle Spirit Halls. And then this 125% lightning damage will double up to 250%. And then this double value of 250% can even further be increased by some Storm Feathers potency. So for example, you can see I've tempered it on my amulet. So I have Storm Feather potency as an affix on my amulet, also on my uh, gloves and on both of my rings. So this is an offensive temper recipe you can put on all offensive gear uh, item slots. And then this will also further increase your Storm Feather potency. And you also have a, a glyph here, which is called uh, here Jacked Plume. And here you also have Storm Feather Potency. So this will increase your, your Storm Feather damage by a lot. And this is your first priority when you temper your items. You just want to get a Storm Feather Potency. And also you want to level this uh, glyph as early as possible. So this is also quite important. And then I also have the Penitent Griefs. So this was just some lucky um, item drop. I did not craft them or I did not gamble them. I just found them. And then I was like, hmm, this is actually a pretty good fit. So we are lacking, in fact, some good offensive aspects on this build. So, so for that reason, we are, for example, playing with the Elements aspect, which is usually not too good. But since we don't have many good options, this is what I have here. And for that reason, Penitent Griefs are actually kind of good. They just increase your damage versus chilled enemies. And you chill everything with the Penitent Griefs here, so this blue um, this blue ground beneath me is the chilling effect. And it also has some further cool synergies, because Evade also grants us unhindered for two seconds. So since we wait all the time, we are also considered unhindered all the time. So we can freely move through enemy packs. And we also get a bunch of movement speed. So even though I have um, not the highest movement speed here, uh, okay, in fact, I have 200% now, but if you would have way less movement speed, then Penitent Griefs will just carry you through the entire movement speed bonus here. So you will just get a huge bonus. So especially in the early game, this is pretty helpful. So I think Penitent Griefs are a pretty good choice here. 
And talking about some other aspects, I also have the um, the Soothsayer's aspect here, which says that killing vulnerable enemies echoes some part of the killing blow's damage. I'm actually not sure if this is the best choice for this build, but so far it worked kind of okay. So of course this will not help you versus the boss. So in order to increase the boss damage, you should play with something like Conceited. Uh, so Conceited will also get, give you increased damage while you have a barrier, which we do. So this is also another option, but right now I'm playing with this uh, Soothsayer's aspect. So, um, yeah, I think it's kind of good in the pit itself, but not helps you against bosses, like I mentioned. And we also have this, uh, I don't know, the name's Binding Morris aspect, which slows enemies and you deal more damage to slowed enemies. I don't have a useful aspect on my chest plate. This is just, uh, just yeah, forget it. It's not useful at all. And yeah, redirected force on my amulet, as I mentioned. So the offensive aspects are not the best, but for that reason, Penitent Grief is very good, I think. And yeah, that's basically it. So we are playing with both Spirit Halls. I can quickly go over the skills. You'll find them, as always, in the planner, in the description. So I'm also maximizing Thunder Spike, although most of the damage comes from the Storm status. But since we have some multipliers such as Follow Through and also Sapasontek, I think it's a good idea to also get some amount of damage from the sp uh, Thunder Spikes. So that's why I also have some points there. But basically you want to maximize Armor Tide also if that's possible. Um, so just to increase your duration of Armor Tide. Um, of course, we're taking all of this eagle uh, damage passives here. I put maximum amount of points into the hunter, so just I can spam the hunter more often, and with intricacy spam my armor tide. And here the key passive is vital strikes, just to deal more damage to vulnerable enemies. And the paragon board, so here I'm starting with the colossal glyph, it just scales my damage with uh, resolve stacks which we also get from Armor Tide. Here we have Sapping, which actually works with the Civate build because we also cast our Thunder, uh, thunder Spike um, while evading, so this works. I already have tested it. Then Jacked Plume, as I mentioned, for Storm Feathers potency. And here I'm playing with Spirit because I'm already leveling my Glyphs for some Poison builds that I want to play in the future. But here you can also play with some other uh, glyphs, I think I will just update it in the planner and then you will find the optimal uh, Paragon board there. But here we're also playing with Drive, which is a very good board because it also gives us movement speed, critical strike chance, and we are dealing uh, more damage based on the meters we are traveled. And with the <laughs> Evade build here, you can see that we are traveling quite fast and the stacks just go up. So, uh, yeah, this was the Paragon board. I can also quickly go over the mercenaries, so here I'm playing with uh, Rahir, just because he gives me some additional armor, which scales my damage. Um, also Mocking Lure for some more damage against taunted enemies. And Reinforcement, I have here my Altkin, who just casts this Field of Languish, which also slows enemies and reduces the damage they're dealing. So just some defensive um, mercenary here. And yeah. Alright guys, I think that's enough for this guide here, I hope you enjoyed it, and have fun building this guide and recreating this build here. And yeah, I would be happy if you leave me a subscribe or a like for this video, if you enjoy this content. I will do more Spiritborn and Rogue guides later on on this channel, so keep attached to that if you're interested in that. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching guys, and have a nice day, and bye bye.